So I got a quick hands on with the Oppo watch. Here's all you need to know about it. It seems like Oppo are making some really big moves with all of their designs, not just in their smartphones, but in this, their first smartwatch. So let's just get this out of the way first. Yes, it does look like the Apple watch. Every single smartwatch that is made from here on out will always look like the Apple Watch. The Xiaomi watch also got called an Apple Watch clone, but the fact is watches look like watches, Omegas look like Rolexes. In any case, as a standalone device, I think Oppo have done a great job with this watch. Different to the Apple Watch, it has this curved display on the left and right. It's actually more subtle than I thought it would be, and I think they've done a good job with the design overall. So this watch is a fully functional smartwatch. It has an eSIM inside as well, so that means that you don't actually have to link it with your phone through Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. You can use it as a standalone connected device, even make calls on it. Obviously with a quick hands-on like this, I cannot test the call quality, the audio quality, or any of the battery life. That will have to come down the road. This watch isn't released for another couple of weeks in China, at least, and probably after that worldwide. Quite a unique aspect to the phone is that it actually uses two different chipsets. The main chipset is a Snapdragon Wear 2500. That's the chipset that will power all the important functions in the device. It's also got a second really low power chipset that you can turn on in battery saving mode. This will turn off all of the core smartwatch features, but will extend then battery life, Oppo say, for a very long time. Again, can't really test it with this sort of video. You have Color Watch OS on here, which is built on top of Android Wear. With the limited amount of gestures you can do on the device, it's pretty simple, and actually a lot like the Xiaomi Watch in terms of the way that the apps are set out. Different to the Xiaomi Watch and also the Apple Watch, there's no rotating crown on here. You just have two buttons on the right-hand side that you can press. I guess they didn't put the crown on the side because they wanted some sort of slightly different design than what we see in the Apple Watch, but that rotating crown is really useful flicking up and down through the menus. So I wonder if in time they will incorporate a crown because it's definitely useful, but you don't have it here. The top button really is just a menu button that takes you back to the main menu. In terms of other connectivity, apart from the eSIM, you get Wi-Fi, obviously. NFC is on here too, and you get Bluetooth 4.2. It will only connect with Android devices that are running Android 6, that's Android Marshmallow and above. The charging on here is obviously wireless. Oppo are calling it VOOC Charge, which is the name they give all of their charging solutions no matter what. But they do say that you can charge about 50% of the battery in roughly 17 minutes. It will come with the charger in the box. They say that you can get around 40 hours on a single charge. That's if you're using the main Snapdragon chipset or if you choose to use battery saving mode and use what they call the Apollo battery saving chipset. They claim that you can get up to 21 days of battery life. No real way to verify these numbers, but the use of two chipsets in one device, it's definitely a unique feature having two completely different chipsets that handle the normal mode and the battery saving mode. It has the whole laundry list of sensors in there. You can measure your heart rate, your sleep patterns. It also has a lot of options to track your workouts as you would expect, but something that it does have that not every smartwatch has is an ECG monitor. The price for this one in China at least is about 1500 RMB, which translates to about 200 or so US dollars. It's certainly on the cheaper side, for the design, all of the features that you get in this, which is pretty much everything that is currently available in smartwatches. I think as a first attempt from Oppo, their very first smartwatch, it's a really good device. Anyway, you can let me know your thoughts as well. Subscribe for all the latest tech news and videos. That's it for now, but I'll see you in the next one.